myself a Sony Handycam, the HDR PJ620, but the features I really like about this can allow you to plug in an external microphone. The sound for these videos should improve dramatically. little feedback monitor. Currently I've been actually using a Canon Snapper or my phone, neither of which give me any kind of feedback monitor so I can't even tell how much I'm in shot, how many shots chop, chop my head off. It's got uh, a lithium battery, uh, maybe I'll have to charge it before I get to use it. 9.2 megapixels, the lens, the lighting count for far more. 60 times clear image zoom, now I don't know how much of that is actual optical zoom or how much of that is just some kind of digital magnification of pixels. 26.8 wide angle lens, 50 megabits high bit rate, so that's 5.1 channel microphone. Now actually I'm going to be doing it in glorious mono, apparently it's got Wi-Fi on board so maybe I can get it to immediately start transferring pictures at my local storage server. Sony Lens G, Bionz X, Hexmore R CMOS sensor. Well that will be the CCD, so maybe that's fancy for a very good CCD sensor. Built-in projector with an external input. This wasn't what I bought it for, but it could be a fun feature. Steady shot, and apparently balanced optical steady shot with the diagrams look like there might actually be lenses with servos that slightly gimbal around to try and keep things steady. It's got Highlight Movie Maker. I use Sony Movie Studio, so I'll probably stick with the software I have. Multi-camera control. Presumably, if you've got other Sony cameras, you can hook this up to them and get it so they all record together. And the other cool new toy I've got is a Rode mic. So that will also improve sound. I'm not 100% sure how well that will fit on top of this. It's a Video Mic Go, lightweight on-camera microphone. It's got a stand 3.5mm jack. The Rycote Lyre Shock Mount. So it isolates it from bumps and vibrations. Well, I'm not going to be running around with it. I suppose I could accidentally bump the table I've got it on, so we'll have to see. This does not have that on there, so I'm going to find a way to mount it on. No complicated switches, it'll settings and is powered by your camera's external microphone input. It's basically just a passive microphone. But it's supposed to be a very good one with, well, a very directional capture. Let's get these open. Let's see what we get in the box with this camera. USB cable is integrated. Okay, so there's not a modular cable. They actually give you an A female to A male adapter instead of some micro or something like that. It's an odd thing. There's your adapter, which is USB, and it's 1.5 amp. That's my growing collection of these. Okay, mini HDMI to HDMI. That's going to be the battery. That's your USB A female to male. Not sure why they didn't just go for a standard micro. I mean, you know, that would have just worked with everyone else's stuff. Right, here's the camera. So that is quite nice and tiny. And what's this up here? That might clip straight into there. I might have been wrong about that not fitting. That would be even more awesome. Okay, so what have we got? We've got door here. We can flip that round so I can see forward monitoring. We've got zoom control here. Photo snapshot. Okay, I won't use that too often. Buttons for the projector and under this the all important microphone port, headphone port, which I'm probably going to not use that often. I am doing this solo, occasionally Helena helps me in the lab, occasionally she's behind the camera, but more often than not I'm filming solo. It looks like you can also do plug-in power through the microphone port, but I haven't got any adapters for that. HDMI input for the projector, and there's a HDMI output. There's an SD card, or an M2 card. Okay, what do we have in here then? So it says audio on the go. I'm just looking to eliminate a lot of external audio. Um, I've already been trying to exclude the airplane noise, um, but there's also ambient noise like sometimes I have extractor fans. Um, the CNC is a big noisy machine. Um, some of that noise is part of the fun, because I suppose the noise of the servo is going, you expect that. But sometimes if it's an extractor, you don't really want to hear that. Okay, so here's a bit of a moment of truth. Does that 
clip into there or is that some other proprietary weird Sony adapter down there? Doesn't quite look like it fits. It would have been very nice if that fit in there. But again, this looks like some other kind of Sony adapter or shoe is expected to go onto that. Failing that, of course, the other thing I might do with this is find a way to mount this, because there's a screw mount under there, and see if I can mount this on a secondary tripod next to the camera or somewhere across from the camera. Because depending on what I'm working on, the sound might need to be slightly different direction from the camera. For example, if I'm working on the CNC, then if the microphone's pointing at me, it'll pick up some of the CNC ambient, but it'll have my voice featuring more prominently. What else have we got? We have a stretchy 3.5mm cable. Nice. Um, and how many metres is that? Oh no, that's very short. So that is actually, if I'm using it with this camera, it really does need to be right on top of it. Okay. And more bedtime reading. Well, hey. Okay, we'll expect my next shot, and I'll try and finish up with this all assembled with this microphone, and let's see how much better that audio and that picture is. Um, I had to actually buy a little adapter shim to adapt the Sony shoe over to the, uh, the normal shoe so I could fit the mic on top, and hopefully the sound on this is now significantly better than the sound I was getting with the other camera. So I'll try and see how it sounds in uh, Movie Studio and uh, if it's actually cut out all of the background noise or lots of the background noise and improved the quality dramatically, then that's a win and I'll be doing that in all my future videos. Okay, after doing a little bit of online research, I've determined that one thing that's really worth doing with the camera is seeing if there is an automatic audio setting, so automatic audio level. If there is such a thing, then it's worth turning that off so then I can actually set the gain on it manually. The dynamic audio range, when I'd have gone quiet, would have actually cranked up the input to pick up any background hisses or noises or ambient sounds, which is exactly what I don't want it to do. What I've done is I've brought down the microphone preamp pretty low, so hopefully there'll be more of my voice and far less background noise. A lower recording preamp level, I will cut out noise along with the clipping and hopefully my voice will be the clearest thing in the sound.